Do you want your kids to actually learn from your gifts this Christmas? Well, here are six options you might consider. You've probably noticed as a parent that after a birthday party, your child is going to receive heaps of useless junk. If you're like me, you want your child's gifts to be educational, to give them a chance to learn and to become more creative. In this video, I'm going to cover six options that I think can do just that. I'm going to keep it as brief as possible, but where I can, I'm going to make summaries and compare to help you make an informed decision if you're interested in any of these. Our first item is a 3D printing pen, and yes, I've covered these before on the channel, but this one is aimed specifically at children. You'll see as I go through the features that it's got a number of things that make it just a little bit safer and future-proof compared to other models. Here is a brief unboxing. It's got a nice magnetic latch. The actual pen, as you can see, has a robot head on the top. More on that later. We have a plastic stand, very handy for holding the pen and preventing kids from hurting themselves. We've got PLA filament in a range of colors. There's two finger protectors. There's a power cable, a little spatula, a two amp five volt adapter, and most importantly, we have a three years warranty card. The instructions are brief and in numerous languages. There's also some templates to trace for a bike and some glasses. Powering up the pen is as simple as plugging it in and then pressing the lower button to start the heating process. Press once to start the flow, press a second time to stop it. It works how you'd expect as a 3D pen. The point of difference is really the robot head and talking function. Both of my kids had a go and were able to use it independently. Hearing the voice commands in the next room let me know what they were doing, but I imagine it would get pretty annoying after a while. Loading filament. Pause. Loading filament. Pause. Unloading filament. If your kid is very artistic, then this might be just the thing to extend them and move their artwork into a third dimension. This product comes in at $39. As you saw, it's got heaps of accessories to make it safer. The personification is a nice touch, and most importantly, it's got that warranty. Probably the main downside is how annoying that voice could be for parents. Now let's have a look at a range of robots that aim to build skills in coding. First, let me say how much of a fan I am of the movie Wally. -E. Well, this next object is definitely inspired by the character Mo. The Cosmo robot by Anki offers a range of unique functionality, and the first time I saw it, I fell in love. Let me show you exactly what it does so you can understand why. Cosmo comes with the robot, three play cubes, and a charger. You need a compatible tablet and it uses Wi-Fi to connect to the robot. As soon as he wakes up, the personification begins. It's excited, it wants to play with you, and it's like a Tamagotchi in that you need to feed it and you also need to exercise it to tune it up by following simple sequences like you can see here. This robot is very charming and captivating. It keeps everyone entertained. You can have a lot of fun making it dizzy, putting it on its side, watching it get angry, putting it on its roof and flipping itself back the right way around. In addition to this, there's a bunch of actions it can do and a series of games as well. This one here, Keep Away, is adorable because when he loses, he has a little tantrum. There's a remote control mode where you can see what Cosmo is seeing, drive around and interact with the environment. All within the same app, there's also a code lab and that has drag and drop block based programming. This is very easy to use, nice and intuitive, and there's lots of different categories to try. As well as basic movement, there's different things you can do such as making him speak and even imitating animals like a dog. There's existing programs that you can download and play and look inside. And if you really want to step it up, you can download the SDK and use script based programming to interface directly with Cosmo. When he's done, he goes to sleep as he charges. So the coding side for this is not as much as the other robots you'll see in this video, but there's something so adorable about when the robot looks up at you, recognizes your face and says your name. Anki Cosmo comes in at $139. You do have remote control. You can do scripting with blocks as well as Python. There's no expansion, but it does have so much personality. The main con, in my opinion, is that it's relatively expensive. Let's have a look at something simpler and cheaper then, and that's the Edison V2 robot. One of the big draw cards of this robot is that it's Lego compatible, and I've used it with great success in the classroom. Let's see just what it can do. Edison V2s are pretty simple and pretty robust. They run on two AAA batteries, and it's important that you get them with the mat. Edison has a play, a stop, and a record button, and we press the record button three times to go over the pre-built barcodes to program the robot. 
This one here is a line tracking program. It's the most basic one that you can do, but other ones also include obstacle avoidance. This means when there's an object in front of Edison, it will backtrack and try and go a different direction. There's also clap controlled driving, which uses a combination of one and two claps to direct Edison around the mat. Another favorite is the stay inside lines, which will do exactly what it says. And also the sumo mode, which when you put two Edisons in, they'll stay within the lines, but try and battle and barge each other out. There's also a follow light one, which follows the brightest light in the room. If you want to use the remote control, we've got another set of barcodes. You run it over and then press a the button on your remote control. Edison now knows the command and can be driven around like this. You would have noticed by now that Edison is Lego compatible. This can be done simply, but there's also instructions for some quite sophisticated objects to build. Like most of these robots, has a drag and drop coding interface that you can load off the internet. The transfer of the program is quite ingenious. It plugs into the headphone jack, converting an audio binary signal into light, flashing the program onto the Edison. Simply hit the play button to unleash your creativity. As you might have guessed, this robot had no trouble keeping four young kids entertained for a night. If you're buying just one, they come in at $49. You can remote control them by programming as shown with the TV remote. With coding, you've got block-based as well as Python. You can expand them greatly by using Lego. Their main strengths are they're versatile and relatively inexpensive. The main problem is that they can need maintenance. Fortunately, it only takes about a minute to pull them apart and fix the drive gears when they slip out. Let's move on by looking at the Spiro SPRK Plus Edition. This robot's pretty unusual. It's like having a hamster inside a hamster wheel, except in this case, of course, a sphere, hence the name. Let's have a look what it can do. This sphere is completely sealed and that includes charging. All of the charging is done wirelessly. You need a compatible tablet with Bluetooth to be able to connect. Your first step is to use the aim command to spin it around so the blue dot faces you. You're able to change the brightness and color of the LEDs as well as the robot speed. When you're ready to go, you put your finger on the on-screen joystick and you can use it to drive Sphero around. This is not very intuitive and quite difficult. You'll find that you crash into things a lot and for that reason, it's lucky Sphero is quite robust. The range is meant to be 30 meters, but even at shorter distances, this robot is still a lot of fun to drive around. There's a lot of accessories available, including this nubbly silicon cover that will enable you to fit it, put it outdoors, erring water, and help it get traction. This grass was just a little bit too much for it, but it works quite well on asphalt. How many robots can you take outside? Other accessories include the chariot. If you like, you can remove the center section and insert your phone. That will let you record videos as you drive Sphero around. Not exactly something I'm about to risk with my phone. It's still just as hard to drive with the chariot, which means even more crashes, not that that diminishes the fun. The chariot, of course, is Lego compatible. You can build on creations and go around and annoy your poor pets, who are somehow amazingly patient with robots like this. As you might expect, Sphero has coding as well. The most novel is this drawing method, where you trace a line, hit start, and off Sphero goes. Take caution, you'll need a lot more room than you expect. Like the others, it also has drag and drop block based programming. The blocks give you access to the raw commands to the motors and that means you can really get this thing moving. The one you're seeing here works great when Sphero is floating in water. The whole time your program is running, you can access the output of the various sensors. Being waterproof means I've even experimented painting with Sphero. Jackson Pollock, eat your heart out. You might agree this is a pretty unique robot and probably the only one you'll find on this list suitable for bath time. It's not the cheapest at $89, although in the description there's a Spiro Mini that goes for around half the price. Radio control is one of its main features. With the coding, you can draw, drag and drop block base, as well as scripting. It does have a range of accessories that make it compatible with Lego. Its main strengths are it's robust, it's sealed and therefore waterproof. And its main cons are it has limited input outputs for coding, even though you can access things like the accelerometer. Our last robot is pint size, but it's very unique because you can program it without using a tablet or a computer. Ozobots come in two varieties. We're looking at the cheaper bit version here. So let's jump right in and see just how it works. These robots are tiny, smaller than a golf ball, and they're their little charging cables next to them. In essence, these are line tracking robots, but they're quite clever in the implementation. You can use the pre-made tracks, but the real beauty is when you start to get kids to draw their own. As the Ozobot goes around, the LED on top will change color to reflect the colored line underneath. The lines do have to be fairly neat, so for younger kids, this is a nice way to build up their dexterity as they head towards handwriting. I found kids improve quickly to get the robot to track their line. Here we have one of the pre-made tracks, and I want you to watch what happens when it gets to the two dots down the end. It flashes on top and executes a maneuver which is programmed by the blocks on track. Here's another one here for a tornado, and I reckon this is a really innovative way to get kids into programming. 
I spent about half an hour with my two kids as we went through and solved this puzzle available from the website. The ultimate goal was to find Ozobot Love by making him visit the letters in order. We had to plan ahead, pick the correct code, and then color it in and test. Ozobot can be used directly on screens after some calibration. There's a dance app that I haven't really played around with, but there's also a mainstream app where you're meant to be able to solve puzzles and have the robot track everything on screen. Despite having the brightness to max and calibrating, I found this quite unreliable. Fortunately, it also has drag and drop coding. Everything is sorted into categories so your child can use the correct one to not be too daunting but not be too limiting either. In this example, I drag out a simple sequence and then here comes another innovative part. You don't need any wireless connectivity to program the robot. All you simply do is hold it on top of the screen, hit program and it flashes the screen in the correct place to program the robot. After that, you can double press and your code will execute. For me, the fact that you could use these without using any technology and own only textures made it perfect for me to teach to primary school kids and they loved it. They're one of the cheaper items here at $39 each. Remote control, well not really, only by drawing lines and having them track it. Coding is versatile with drawing, drag and drop block based, as well as the dance app. You can expand them by buying various theme covers like Marvel that go on the top. Their main strength by far is that they go from very low tech all the way up to high tech. And the con is that they don't have many sensors to interface when you're doing your coding. It's worth noting that if you want to get the more expensive Evo model, it's got proximity sensors, speakers, and different LED lights so you can code even more. Now finally, it makes a lot of sense for a channel that mainly covers 3D printing to look at a 3D printer for children. I've actually reviewed it before on the channel, so if you want more detail, head to that video. Otherwise, I'll keep it brief for this one. This is a small and simple 3D printer. It requires zero assembly and it has one touch operation to start prints. You can bump it up to a maximum about 60 millimeters per second. And in doing so, you'll be able to print multiple filaments, including PLA, PETG, and I even had plenty of success printing with flexibles. You can use your regular slicer or you can use the pre-packaged one with one click slicing operation. When I reviewed it, a lot of people said it looked like an MBOT, which was a failure, but this one for me has never really had a failed print. It's priced at just $169. Simple, foolproof, pre-assembled, and definitely safe compared to other printers. In terms of print quality, its main con is no cooling fan, and of course, it's similar in price to the Ender 3, but much less capable. If you've got a child designing their own products on Tinkercad and printing it on this, there is zero chance they're gonna complain about minor print artifacts and you have the peace of mind of knowing that it's simple and straightforward for them to use. That's gonna wrap this one up. Links to all of these and some variants for them are in the description. Please leave a comment below if you've used any of them, if you would recommend any of them, or just if you're interested in anything you've seen here today. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Happy Christmas shopping. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.